and I want to tell you guys uh, what has happened with the update, good or bad, and uh, the details on it. Let me explain what this update just did in my market. All right, if you guys want to follow me on X, my Twitter account, I'll put a link for it. It'll be in the description. All right, so we've been waiting for this upgrade. Right, the first, like, uh, I guess, launch, initial launch of C band N77 or Verizon was for a 60 megahertz channel of N77. It was pretty awesome when it first launched, right? We were super excited about that after the whole, you know, FAA thing, you know? So, uh, you know, we were seeing speeds of like four or five, 600 megabits per second peak. And we were very happy with that. You know, it was this brand new capacity and, you know, allowing folks to get home internet and allowing folks to have better, you know, mobile networking experience, right? And then what was, what was followed up in a later update, many months later, was a 100 megahertz bandwidth channel. And the reason that happened is because the A block was being split between AT&T and Verizon for an agreement. Uh, Verizon ended up getting the full A block once AT&T got their B block cleared, right? Early clearance from satellite. So they got that portion, which was like 40 megahertz. And then DOD was on air, so that was 80 megahertz. And then they gave Verizon back the 40 and then got their 80 <laughs> in, in full. So it was, anyways, Verizon went from 60 to 100 and everything was fantastic. We were seeing peak throughputs at the SMT HQ off peak at like seven, 800 megabits per second down. During peak, it was like 400 right 300 400 or 50 500 somewhere in there at the 60 megahertz we were seeing like you know peaks of like 250 200 and off peak you know like five 600 so it's just to kind of give you an idea of the throughput now we just got the update for 140 megahertz what this did was it has the 100 megahertz from before and added an additional 40 megahertz that's what Verizon has here for c-band 140 megahertz of n77 and this is what happened, folks. The throughput has nosedived, specifically in, in a couple of different ways. First, first of all, let me say this. The Google Pixel 7 Pro has officially had its modem broken by this Samsung Radio Gear upgrade. In fact, it is an absolute downgrade. What ends up happening is the Pixel does not pick up on the 100 megahertz channel anymore. It now only connects to the 40 megahertz channel of block b now what i think this tells me is that this power has or this this channel gets more power than the 100 megahertz channel i think because there's no reason why it should be picking up a 40 megahertz channel over a 100 megahertz channel in fact it should be aggregating both for 140 megahertz but that's not what's happening we're getting the 40 megahertz of the b blocks as the primary connection and then it's getting the LTE. So if you look at the speed test here from the Pixel 7 Pro, 131 down, about 30 up. The ping time's at 25 milliseconds and the jitter's at eight. Not good. Uh, we, you know, during peak time at 100 megahertz, you know, I was getting, you know, four or 500 megabits. Now I'm down at 130. Uplink especially, you know, going from 30, 40, 50 megabits now down to under 30. We lost a lot of throughput with this upgrade on the Pixel. It's almost unrecognizable. You wouldn't even know you were connecting to N77 C-band with this type of throughput. I can get better than this on LTE at my home site. I'll prove it to you guys. If I scroll up my Twitter timeline, you guys will see the speed test here. This is from the same device in the same spot on LTE. 33 megabit per second ping, 8 jitter, 327 down, and 29.59 up. We doubled the throughput, more than doubled the throughput by switching from 5G to LTE. The Google Pixel 7 Pro is absolutely broken on Verizon. The modem, the 5G modem, this is an absolute failure. I don't know what's going to happen here. I don't know, because obviously the update just came in from the, the vendor for the radio gear right, for Samsung, this is a Samsung modem, Exynos modem, 
right? In this phone. This is just horrible. Okay, so I'm going LTE only on my Pixel moving forward. There's no reason to be on 5G. There just isn't, right? I might as well just save the battery life, right? So that's the Pixel. Now things are a little bit different on the iPhone. All right, so I'll show you guys this. On the iPhone, same scenario, right? We went from a 100 megahertz channel, getting about, you know, 400 peak, 500 peak. You know, um, we basically are flat, basically, right? So you added the additional 40 megahertz and I confirmed it in the field test mode. 140 megahertz of N77, we're getting 538 down and 26 up. Again, a downgrade to the uplink when before I was getting like 40, 50 megabits up. So this is awful. There's no reason for me to have 5G on anymore. What's the point? You're, you're, you're crushing your battery just to be connected to more bandwidth that doesn't help you. So what I'm doing, folks, is I'm turning 5G off. I'm going to go with LTE. I'm going to save my battery life and enjoy throughputs that are just basically as good and in some ways better on certain devices with LTE. Again, I don't know what, what's going to happen. I don't think there's going to be another Samsung update for this anytime soon. Usually these updates, I think, are quarterly. So at the earliest, I think the next update is coming, I don't know, a few months from now. All right. Um, it's really disappointing. I guess I hold out hope for the iPhone because the updates are typically more productive. But folks, they, they shot down the power on, 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 on these channels because now it's being split between 40 megahertz of N77 and 100 megahertz of N77. I don't know what the solution is. I really don't. Some people are saying that with a standalone network core launch, a lot of this can be addressed. I don't know if that's the case. I don't know if it's true. I don't know. All right. I don't have access to the, you know, to any type of documents or training or literature. I, you know, I don't have any of those engineering protocols. I don't, I don't know. Um, but from a hardware standpoint, device standpoint, this is awful. I'm not happy about this. Now, the reason why this really bothers me at the end of the day is because Verizon was the exemplary 5G network here in Cleveland. Very reliable, tons of, of capacity, spectrally efficient. You know, AT&T in my house on 5G Plus, guys, the C-Band and DoD gets me like 350 down and like four up. And T-Mobile's N41, right? AT&T's got 120 megahertz of, of C-band and DoD. T-Mobile's got 160 megahertz of N41. In my house, they get like 500 down and one up, two up. Verizon was the exemplary network, and now we've lost some of that panache, right? We've lost some of that momentum. I'm looking at the performance. It's very average. There's nothing special about this. Uh, we lost throughput from the same distance because power levels are down because you're splitting it between the two channels. I'm not happy about this. Not happy at all. So I'm I'm unhappy and displeased with Samsung for this. I'm unhappy and displeased with the Galaxy, or excuse me, the, the Pixel. Uh, the iPhone, I, I guess I have to buy a Galaxy now because, you know, how am I going to test with inferior modems and products? I, I don't know what to do anymore. I guess um, we'll just tough it out through the end of the year, and then the new Galaxy S24 will come out in January or February, whenever. And we'll just buy that $1,500 piece of junk and see if it's any better. We'll see. Uh, just thought I'd let you guys know that's what's happening here. I don't know if it's happening where you are. Again, I'm testing from one mile away. All right, maybe if it's closer, maybe if I'm close to a site, we'll see like gigabit, 1.5 gigs down, and 100 megabit up. But from range, because of the power reductions, power reductions, we've got trouble and loss and spectral efficiency. I'm not happy about this. So now all three officially underachieving at the SMT. All right, trash, trash, and more trash. Not a happy camper, folks. Let me know what your experiences are if you're in a Samsung market. If you've been testing these post update uh, to the all this, this is all the C band spectrum Verizon has, folks. This is what I'm living at least for the next few months. Sucks. I'm switching to LTE. Sound off in the comment section below. You all the voice of the people of the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard.